That's, I mean, and that's the thing, man. The old, the old me would have, you know, I, I, I kind of give a, a talk now about, cause I lost three fights in a row, 688 days. I went without winning a fight back a couple of years ago and I made three mistakes. And the number one, the first mistake I made was I wanted to hide from the loss. Media was calling me. I was up for fight of the year. They wanted me to pre present a war an award at the world MMA awards. Hey, come, come present this award. I didn't take anybody's phone calls, anybody's text messages, anybody's emails. I, st I stood, I was off social media because I was just embarrassed, ashamed. Um, I wanted to hide, but man, this, this is where the growth happens. The happens, the growth happens in these moments where I can sit next to you. I mean, a guy who's lost, I mean, you're, you're an athlete, everyone in here, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete, if you're a non-athlete, we all suffer loss. We all suffer set setbacks. We all make promises that we want to make good on. Like I wanted to bring that belt home. Like me and my son prayed for daddy's belt every single night for the last two months, the last eight weeks we prayed every single night about daddy's belt and why daddy is gone. Why daddy has to be in Florida, has to be working, has to be training, has to be away from his son, away from his fatherly duties, away from the promise that I made to him. So I wanted to make good on that promise, but the belt is just the piece of the 12 pounds of leather and, and gold that signifies being a world champion. But in order to be a champion in life, you have to keep moving from setback to setback without losing the enthusiasm, without losing the steam with complete disregard to my previous failures, my previous setbacks, one that just happened 48 hours ago. I still got mm -hmm. the black eye to prove it. You know, <laughs> that wasn't million, you know, millions yeah. of people saw it. And uh, there's I'm sure there's a lot of people saying a lot of things about me you know, eating my words and I wasn't that good or I was, you know, but I'm choosing not to hear those things and just moving forward in a positive light that this is part of the journey. And when we do win that belt, when the belt does come on the belt for the boys with the boys, it's going to be even better. So I hit the ground running this morning. I, I got a sauna session in 40 minutes, just, you know, discipline myself like Tommy. Is the sauna at your house? Uh, no, I actually have one here. It's not put together. We just moved and stuff. So I just went to the YMCA and which was much hotter anyway. So I sat there for 40 minutes and sweated it out, sweated out the, the sweat that was in me for that fight and then sweated it out. Monday morning, we hit the, we hit the ground running, did something for my body, my soul. And now here we are talking about it, expressing through the loss, admitting the failure but not only admitting the failure, sitting here with a smile on my face saying Saturday really did end Saturday night and Sunday morning, a new sun rose and Monday morning, the sun rose again, a little bit more painfully, a little bit more, you <laughs> right. know, a little yeah. bit more tough, but man, this is, it's all part of life. This, this whole thing. And that's why people are drawn to mixed martial arts is that is it's a metaphor for life. Like what I went through on in sat on Saturday night had a really had a great first round one ten eight on two of the three scorecards and then got caught you know got caught and lost and, yeah. another, and the other guy left with the belt that i was supposed to have but yeah this is life talk about um because before we get into all the fight and everything like that talk about those the next 24 hours after that loss after you you recollect your thoughts you give the uh you give the interview with joe rogan like what are the next 24 hours actually like like yes the sun does rise. And I think this is the, I was telling Garrett on the way over the reason I'm, uh, I was fired up about talking to you, um, is because this is the majority of everyone's journey in life. Anyway, is failures. Most mm -hmm. of the time you fail your way to the top. Like you go through so many setbacks to end up, see you at the top, getting to the top. Like it's not just some escalator that takes you up there. Like yep. you, this is the majority of what life looks like is losing. Yep. So, Take us through those first 24 hours after after the loss, after the press conference. You're banging your head against the mic. Yeah. Like you can see the emotion. Like it was it sucked watching it. Mm -hmm. And you just know, like, fuck, man. Take yeah. us through those uh those first 24, 48 hours. Well, I think I think the hardest thing, the hardest part about mixed martial arts is it is it is just so tumultuous. There there is always a chance that you can lose, even with even if you're a thousand to one favorite. Man, we're wearing four ounce gloves, these tiny little bitty gloves. And you have these spots on your body, you know, the temple, the chin, wherever it may be, the liver, wherever it may be, where the body just shuts off and says, nope, we're done. And the fight is over. And it, I prepared perfectly. I left no stone unturned. 
I did every single thing that I possibly could, lived my life like a champion. From the moment Hunter Campbell, who is number two in command at the UFC, and then Dana called me that, that same day, and whenever they called me and said, hey, you're fighting Charles Oliveira, May 15th for the UFC title. From that moment, I lived my life like a champion, did exactly what I needed to, needed to do to put myself in the best situation to win. So when it's over and you don't win, then it's, then it's just... You know, the kind of the bang in my head on the mic, I think it was after uh, a reporter named Mark Ramondi answered or asked me a question about something. And that's when, you know, every now and then it just kind of hits you and you're like, dang, man, it's over. Like, it's over. You can't get this one back. It's not a dream. You're not going to wake up and the bell's about to ring and you're going to get another chance. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we were saying. Like, I'm going to let you finish that thought, too. But when you like lose a playoff game or something happens where it's just not. And it was the same thing when when. uh it was final that you had lost. It's mm-hmm. like waking up from a dream and that bell's going to ring again and yep. you're going to have another shot. Yep. Cause that, I've had those nightmares and a lot of times I do have those nightmares two weeks before, right? Two, three weeks before the, before the fight, I imagine, or I, I think I wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. Like I got knocked out, I got choked out or I got extremely tired. I got outclassed. I got, just got beat. Um, and you know, that's kind of what it, it it felt like when when the press conference is over. Then it's like, okay, now you go back to normal life. I knew even even after the fight, I met back there it was just me and my wife. I'm freaking crying my crying my eyes out. Usada is right there. I almost I pretty much almost cussed that guy out because I'm like, dude, give me a second to breathe, man. Like I'm gonna pee in your cup. I'll get it's it's. Fine. Oh, he's trying to get you to take a piss test right right when you got back. Oh man, well I I I was in the I went back to go see the doctor and he's doing the 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 lights and the eyes to check my eyes, check my balance, check my concussion, whatever protocols. And he's there and he's like, hey man, and I'm with Usada. You got to pee in this cup. I'm like, okay, well give me a second, man. Like give me give me one second. And uh, so then he followed me back there and it was just me and Bree. And then I, you know, did the use side of thing. I apologized to him because I wasn't, wasn't the nicest. Did you cuss? Maybe, probably. I don't know, man. My you don't man. cuss. You're pretty tight. You're pretty, you're pretty probably. disciplined with the cuss. Words. Now, yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. It's, and I think it's, it's just, it's that, you know, when it hits you that it's, it's over and, and that's, but that's the thing. I, I truly sit here. I truly sit here with zero regrets. Like I did every single thing that I possibly could. And this is just the nature of life in general outside of of an octagon, but in the octagon, especially it's just the nature of the business, man. You, you win some and you lose some. And unfortunately you're going to lose often. I mean, I'm fine. I fought the number three guy in the world, a guy who was on an eight fight winning streak, a guy who's now the number one guy in the world, a guy who, you know, he's great. He's good. Um, my next fight is going to be against another guy who's top five, who's great, whoever that is. Like I'm, you know, you're fighting at the upper echelon. You're going, you're going to lose. And um, so I think that was, that was just it. It's like, man, if I had another shot, I would probably win that fight. You know? So you, you yeah. kind of, then you start playing, you replaying it over and it's like, should I have let him up in the first round and should, or should I have done this or should I have done that? But when you did every single thing that you possibly could to put yourself in the best situation to win, you really can't have any regrets. And th- and that's the only thing I can ask for. If I if I lost that fight and I was like, gosh, dang, man, if that weight cut wasn't so bad because I wasn't disciplined with my weight, or if I, you know, came in and I didn't and I and I knew I didn't really train that hard, or I didn't I slacked in this area, I slacked in that area. I had no I had none of that because I did every single thing that I possibly could to to win the fight, to get myself in the position when that cage door closed and that bell rang that I was going to showcase my skills and may the best man win. That's what I said. That's what I always say. I preach it all the time. You, you got to embrace the uncertainty that's about to happen. And part of embracing that uncertainty is the fact that you may lose. Shoot, there might even be a 50% chance that you're going to lose and more than 50% chance that you're going to lose because you're fighting the best guy in the world. It's like, like you said, a playoff game. You don't just fall to the, fall to the, to the playoffs. You, you, you just fall into a playoff game. You have to be good enough to be in a playoff game. And then chances are you're, you're, playing against a team who is really freaking good and you're both rising to the occasion and you're both rising to the occasion and then made the best man win and the better man won that night i guess if you you will or that night he was the better man we could fight 10 more times and i could win 10 more times you never it's just part of the game i hope you guys like this clip if you want to continue to be for the boys you need to like this video subscribe to the channel share with a friend and check out our playlist we have all the links right here on the screen As always, biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Also, go check out the full episodes, but always for the boys.